Hello, Nerdgenic Nation, and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd, Aaron Waller, and this is the series where we do a deep dive into various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and give a little bit more insight as to who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's video, I wanna talk about a character that not a lot of people know about, but she's about to be everywhere in the MCU, and that's Echo. Echo was created by David Mack and Joe Quesada, and first appeared in Daredevil number nine in 1999, and lands in two very rare categories of comic book characters. She's Native American, and she's deaf. Echo was born Maya Lopez. When she was a young girl, her father, Willie Crazy Horse Lincoln, was killed by Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin. And as Crazy Horse died, he would leave a bloody handprint on his daughter's face and ask Kingpin to raise Maya as his dying witch. Kingpin would honor this wish and treat Maya as his own, even sending her to some very expensive schools for prodigies. But Kingpin would also feed various lies to Maya that Daredevil killed her father when it was actually him. Maya would then be sent by Kingpin to pinpoint his nemesis Matt Murdock's weakness. The two would eventually fall in love, however, and Maya would take on the Echo persona to hunt down Daredevil. And with this moniker, Maya paints a white handprint on her face, similar to that of the bloody handprint her father left on her face as he died. Echo then pursues Daredevil, and having studied both Daredevil and Bullseye's fighting style from various videotapes, she's able to be a match for Daredevil. The two would have several battles, but Maya finally determines Daredevil's weakness of fighting him in a place where his heightened senses are useless, and nearly kills Daredevil before she find out that it's actually Matt Murdock. He's able to convince Maya of Kingpin's lies and she goes to confront Fisk and eventually shoot him in the face, blinding him and even begins the chain of events that leads to his downfall. Rightfully so, Maya would be traumatized with the realization of the lies she had been fed for years and flee the country. But when she returns, she tries to rekindle her relationship with Murdoch only to find out he's with another woman and that Kingpin was actually still alive. So she goes to visit him in prison where he tells her that he doesn't blame her for what she did and that he still loves her like a daughter. Still feeling confused, Echo goes on a vision quest from her father's old friend, the Chief, where she meets Wolverine, who ends up helping her find herself again, as well as teach her about the Japanese culture and organized crime. Maya would later go on a bit of an identity crisis and felt unable to join the new Avengers due to not wanting to tarnish their reputation as heroes, so she dons a new suit and becomes the first ever Ronin. Daredevil recommends that she joins the Avengers in capturing the Silver Samurai, to which Maya agrees. She would join the Avengers and return to Japan to monitor Elektra in the clash between the Hand and the Clan Yoshida. Around the conclusion of Civil War, she would be killed, but in classic comic fashion, she would be resurrected in the same way Elektra was and be taken captive by the Hand. Then Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Doctor Strange, Iron Fist, and Spider-Woman would go on a mission to recover her and would succeed, but not before they revealed that she was brainwashed and she ends up stabbing Doctor Strange. After an extensive battle, Doctor Strange is able to recover just enough to free Maya from her brainwashing. She then rushes over to Elektra, stabs her, and ends up revealing that Elektra was actually a Skrull. After returning home, Maya officially gives the Ronin persona over to Clint Barton, who has the Ronin persona in Avengers Endgame. As to whether or not we'll have any flashbacks, we don't know yet, but it would be interesting to see if we get to see this in the future. Echo would pop up in various other comic stories, including World War Hulk, where she would defend the Sanctum Centaurum, where she, Iron Fist, and Clint Barton would be defeated and captured. During Secret Invasion, however, she would join the Mighty Avengers and New Avengers in fighting the Skrulls, coming off the ship in an outdated hero outfits and various other battles against the Skrulls. After that, she would go on a little bit of a hiatus, but Echo would would return in the fourth Moon Knight series as an undercover stripper who saves Mark Spector in a club. Once her cover is blown, the two end up taking down the West Coast Kingpin and have an on-again, off-again relationship before she's eventually killed again by Count Nefaria. And you guessed that she would once again be resurrected, but she would go on to team up with both Daredevil and Captain Marvel. The final big arc for Echo, however, happened in the Enter the Phoenix crossover, where she would be chosen by the Phoenix Force to compete in a tournament with various other heroes and villains as to who would be the next host. All participants would be given a piece of the Phoenix power and paired up to fight each other. Echo would have to go up against Namor, but due to her disadvantage, she would be defeated and presumably eliminated. Despite her loss, however, she would refuse to die and the Phoenix would be drawn to her and end up choosing her as the new host and even declare herself as Thunderbird, where she would be telepathically connected by Jean Grey and would be given some advice on how to control the power of the Phoenix. Echo will be making her very first live action appearance in the Disney Plus original series Hawkeye and will later be getting her own spin-off series when she She'll be played by Alika Cox. And based on her history, we may even get to see her again in a Daredevil series that's currently rumored to be in production for Disney+. Now, Echo's abilities is something I haven't touched on while exploring her evolution, but she is an Olympic level athlete and even possesses some photographic reflexes, very much like Taskmaster, allowing her to copy any fighting style or movement after 
having seen him. This is also how she's able to become a talented fighter, musician, acrobat, ballerina, and basically an expert at any and all things. Once she becomes a Thunderbird and hosts the Phoenix Force, she acquires the abilities of telepathy, flight, strength, cosmic energy abilities, and so much more. So those are some of the things you need to know about Echo. Did you learn anything in this video you may not have known otherwise? If you did, let me know in the comment section down below what you found out, as well as leave me a comment as to any other characters you would like to see on this series. Your suggestion might become next week's video. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos from me or the rest of the Nerdgenic team. And be sure to check out these awesome videos on screen, like this deep dive that I did into giving evidence as to why both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home, or check out this video right over here. And for you video game fans, be sure to check out this video from Russell where he gives his in-depth review as to the multiplayer beta from Halo Infinite. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it, and we hope to see you in the next video.